Good evening, Glue Troopers. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So, uh, got a few things done today before the tornadoes came and Max ran into the house. But I did manage to get the, the kaiju done, Pagila and Gaios. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it, it wasn't until after I got it painted and started taking pictures that um, seams are a little worse than I thought, but uh, I, I didn't file them down or enough. I thought I was going to paint seal them, but that didn't uh, work out. And it wasn't until I started taking pictures I could see the shadows, but I've already got them done. I'm going now, I'll probably break something. But you know what? It, it, it's really on the camera that you see it. I don't notice it when it's sitting on the shelf, so just going to leave it. Uh, I wound up having to put, I thought I thought painting Pagila was going to be real simple. I mean, the instructions just say basically gray and put the little rocks on his chest black. That's it. And, oh, okay. But then they included this picture of, I guess it was the actual studio costume. And uh, I had to watch that clip. And I was like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to detail it more. So I wound up putting about five or six different layers of paint on it to get that uh, dirty snow look on it. But I, I actually... I like the way it turned out. Um, uh, I uh, the of course the Gaios uh, because it was I did paint it, but uh, just because it's essentially more of a toy, I just painted the teeth and mouth and eyes and, and the rest of it was green. I didn't worry about trying to shade it or anything. Um, but uh, so also uh, I got to work on the Supermarine race plane, and I had actually glued the fuselage halves together. I was gonna I did paint them today, but. When I took it out and looked at it, there's no alignment pins in the back of the airplane. Everything lined up, but apparently the clamps, as the glue dried, it slightly twisted it so that towards the tail, the two halves are a little out of alignment. So I had to file all that down. I, I had used uh, enough glue that even uh, a solvent wasn't going to get that apart. And it wasn't too much, but you know, extra work I created for myself. Uh, I think the clamp was just squeezing it too tight and it slid just a, a little bit, but it still looks good. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look nice. I'm, that's just going to be kind of a, a straightforward build. Uh, the GB, on the other hand, that TD gave me, that's going to present a little bit of a challenge because um, although the airplane is very, the kit's very straightforward, uh, there's a thin black trim around the red paint. So I've got to come up with a, a painting plan for it. The decals have the numbers and everything, but not, not all the, the, the paint scheme on it. So since uh, Hawk did outline the paint scheme in the plastic, I've got a perfectly good guide. So what I think I'm going to do is tape it off, trace it out, you know, uh, you know, trim it, trim the tape, and probably shoot a coat of black. Let that harden, put some clear coat over it. Then figure out a way to put a very thin uh, trim cover over the black and then shoot it in red. Now... There's a couple ways I could do that. I, I, I could try getting a tape that would curve, or uh, I could peel off the uh, um, tape that I used and uh, put reapply it, moving it up a little bit just to cover the trim, or I can try to use the liquid uh, mask and see if that would protect it you know you know put a thin layer of that or you know around all the, the complex curves and everything and then shoot it i'm not sure how i'll do it yet because it's going to be a trick uh at 172nd scale i thought about you know what i'll just i'll just do it in red or and i also thought about using a pen uh, an ink pen or a felt pen or a paint pen or something to just draw it on and that's another option in fact possibly Taping it, cutting it out, shooting it in red first, and then using the edge of the tape as a guide might be the best way. I'd like to know how the guy who built the model on the box did it, because he did some obviously beautiful work. Um, so that's that. Uh, that that's going to be, at 172nd scale, that's going to be quite the trick. But hey, you know what? It's a modeling challenge. Now, some models... Uh, you know, I just build them rather quickly. Just enjoy the build. Don't put a lot of stress. Very basic paint job. Like, well, uh, the uh, the Supermarine float racer is, is going to be like that. I'm, the, the, the plane, with, except for the fuselage, is basically molded in color. So I'm doing a very simple, basic build on it. Just a relaxed, fun build. I'm uh, going to put it all together. Uh, I've got the fuselage painted blue. 
I'll mate that to the wing of the tail, see how it looks, maybe touch up a few things here with some paint, put the decals on it, clear coat it, and just sort of looks good on the shelf. Relaxed, easy build. But but the GB I want to do a nice job on. Um, you know, I want to I want to do a I don't like to use the word professional, but just just a, a higher skill level job. You know, some models you really want to make look nice, and others you're like, yeah, okay, just look presentable. This one's for me, but others are like, yeah, this is I want this to be a showpiece. So uh, I'll see how it goes with the GB. And that's kind of a warm up because I really want to do a nice job on the Wood Woodell Williams, which is next in line. And um, so, uh, again, I'll probably, if I can get this place cleaned up, I'll probably have a couple other builds going on the side. So, when, you know, I have to let stuff harden. If I'm still in the mood to work, I can go tinker on something. Um, I like, I, I build fairly quickly. But uh, some models I really want to slow down and take my time on, like those accurate miniature kits that were sent to me. I'm absolutely going to slow down because I've built an accurate miniatures kit and I know how good they are and how much detail is in them. Uh, the Edward kit that Mark sent me, I want to make sure I take my time on that Mustang. And um, I'm, I'm debating with that Mustang when I get to it. Um, I've never used, I believe it's the Alclads one where you have to put the black gloss on and then you put the metal paint. I've never used that stuff before. I've heard it's pretty tricky. Uh, I might practice on a couple of kits because that would make it, that would be beautiful for the Mustang. Um, I think I think an all aluminum Mustang, um, and I, I might I'm probably going to put it in Korean War markings because uh, I have a Korean War shelf which a, one of my World War II Mustangs is on from the when I did the two Mustangs in the build in the comparison between uh, Ravel, which was really the old monogram kit and um, and Tamiya and. Uh, I realized I don't have a Mustang on my Korean War shelf, and Mustangs were out there. They were not the airplane that should have been out there, but that's what they had, so that's what they used. Um, what's the name of that movie? Uh, was it Battle Hymn, the one with Rock Hudson, where uh, it's a true story. I believe it's Colonel Dean Hess, I believe was his name, the preacher that was a fighter pilot in World War II and then went back and fought in Korea, masterman of Operation Kitty Car, where he got a whole bunch of kids from an orphanage uh, flown out to... It was Chodo Island or somewhere to escape the communists. Anyway, um, the uh, they had a lot of Mustangs around after the war, the reserves and the guard and everybody, and that's what we were given to people. So both in the Republic of Korea Air Force uh, and I think even the U.S. Air Force were, were, were using them in Korea, and they we lost a lot of them because they're using them ground attack, and it wasn't what it was made for. Uh, it's a great airplane, but uh, all that ground fire, all it took was a bullet hole in your liquid cooling system, the radiator, and you were probably not going to make it back to your airfield. Anyway, um, oh, somebody, two things. Somebody asked me about Frankenstein monsters. Of course, with the old Aurora kits, they've got pretty pricey, and Aurora had big Frankie. The only one I know of off the top of my head that's still in production is actually a couple of them made by Mobius. So uh, there's uh, there's that. And then... Um, the the I don't think anybody else is making the Aurora kit. I know that Atlantis makes a couple of Aurora figures that they got the rights to, but I don't think I don't think they have Frankenstein. It'd be a good one if they did. Um, so uh, and the other thing, this is at the request of a viewer. Luke, I am your father. There you go. So uh, that's about it for tonight, guys. Uh, making headway on the models. Got the little. Little one three hundred scale F eighty six getting painted here, um, and uh, uh, we'll see what tomorrow holds. No promises. If I make no promises, I tell you no lies. So guys, have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a good evening and uh, model on.